are doing the Rick Steves walking tours and the app, he has all the audio tours and you know where you're gonna go. Makes me happy. I don't know if you can hear the bells. <laughs> this is what we're gonna look like all day. We got Rick Steves in our ear and we're looking at whatever's around us. Of all the, the stage shows I didn't know I wanted to see, <laughs> there's Back to the Future, the musical. Who knew? <laughs> Next up in the string of odd musicals, we have Pretty Woman the Musical. Don't know why we need a musical of that. We've hit a new level this time. Heather's walking around with the book being the audio tour. <laughs> There's three parts to this tour and the audio in the app doesn't include this first part because it's optional. So I'm reading it out of the book. For me, it's still an audio tour. Yes. Lucky me. Fine institution of learning right there. That's where you'd go if you want to be a king? I guess. Learn how to do it? Yeah, Maybe. probably. Pretty much a tech, uh, vocational school. This is the Australia house. It is funny that everywhere we went, the country is now defined by Harry Potter. So this was Gringotts Bank in the movies. Inside is where they filmed it and you have like the long yes. corridor. And this was the Royal Court of Justice. Such a cool building and it's got a super cool name. Name that you would think you'd go there for justice. According to Rick Steves, this little tea shop is famous. Dragon. This is the city boundary between Westminster and London. That's the old Bank of England. I assume they have a new Bank of England now. The old Bank of England is now a pub. But the old one has cool chandeliers in there. I hope you can see it. around here at the top of the hour. This is where the great fire in London ended because 40 students held back the plane and said, you shall not pass. There is the statue of Queen Elizabeth I. So who is Dr. Samuel Johnson? He wrote the first English dictionary. And that's his house. Here is St. Bride's Church, but it's closed today. We're finding a lot of things that are closed. But yeah, it's all crammed in here. So we went up Fleet Street that became Ludgate. Here is St. Paul that was rebuilt after the fire. After the fire. But survived yeah. World War II. Yeah. Before we even came on this trip, we picked up the London City Pass, which gave us entrance to all kinds of things, including St. Paul's. And we were able to just walk up, scan our passes, and we got the audio tour, and we were able to go right in and skip the line. So this is just looking straight up the nave towards the altar. Um, interesting note, Princess Diana and King Charles were married in St. Paul's Cathedral. One recurring theme through all of this was World War II memorials. We made it through the whole church, made it to the altar. They had these beautiful stained glass windows surrounding it. And in those stained glass windows were little panes and there was one for each U.S. state to honor the servicemen that went and fought in World War II. All 50 states were represented in there. It, was re it really was American central. Yeah, they have gratitude. That's nice. Yes. And they had this book where, that listed all of the names of the servicemen who lost their lives there. And uh, they keep it behind the altar in St. Paul's. Yep. When they rebuilt that area behind the altar, they carved a rocket uh, behind those leaves into the woodwork. Um, and that's a U.S. rocket. A nod to the collaboration between the two countries to defeat Germany in World War II. It's so cool. We're climbing 529 steps to the top of the cathedral. They're short, but they're consistent. They feel like half a step because they're so shallow. How are you feeling? <laughs> I just took a big deep breath. Climbing, climbing. We weren't allowed to go into the spring gallery, so we're coming up to the stone gallery. 
Saints, we have one level to go. On top of St. Paul's, we have a heck of a view. This is looking right out the front, right down Fleet Street. And over there is the, the Thames. It's a pretty good view. Now that I know where I'm looking, <laughs> I have reference of where things are. So we're waiting for our turn to go up further, but apparently it's a tight spiral staircase and we've seen half a dozen people bail out. Okay, this is, this is the inner dome. We're gonna go up this staircase for a while. We found this strange sculpture where you could be a human among animals at a table and like all the other tours we stopped and took a picture. That's funny. St. Mary Lebeau Church. Yeah. is a statue of John Smith, the guy that got saved by Pocahontas, apparently. We, we need Pocahontas. <laughs> oh boy, no statue of Pocahontas. So that is a monument to the fire, the great yeah. fire, that stood by itself here for 300 years before all these buildings were built around it. And then we walked across the London Bridge on our way to Globe Theater and several other sites on the other side. We're now on the south side of the Thames, and there's the shard that we're going up tomorrow. The Golden Hindi was Sir Francis Drake's flagship as he circumnavigated the globe from 1577 to 1580. Three years later, Drake, with only one remaining ship and 56 men, sailed the Hindi up the Thames, unloading a fabulously valuable hoard of gold, silver, emeralds, diamonds, pearls, silk, cloves, and spices before the queen. The grateful Elizabeth knighted Drake on the main deck and kissed him on his Golden Hindi. We made it to the Globe Theater. We okay, were getting set for our tour of the Globe Theater, but first here is this awesome depiction. It's an etching from 1647, depicting London. We are now in the Globe Theater in the exhibition portion. And we'll be doing the live tour in just a few minutes. This is Heather trying out the press in the museum. I don't think you're- do not touch. That says do not touch. This is I'm looking for it to say it somewhere. Well, there you go. Our tour took us into a replica Globe Theater that has been built on site, and they actually do performances there. And on the off chance you don't recognize the name, the Globe Theater is where William Shakespeare and friends did their plays, and he became famous and changed the literary history of the world. So, the plumpers are loving it, the royals are loving it, the city authorities hate it. Why have they banned it? They don't come. That book is 400 years old this November. Um, they printed 700 copies. Kind of come and grab them if you want to make. This is one of the first portfolios of Shakespeare's actual place. So here we have a Shakespeare insult generating book. And I just tried it and got a lisping one trunk inheriting pig nut. So I'm gonna use that insult from now on. So it's like 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. and we're done. We've done a walking tour all day. Just got out of Globe Theater. And before that, we saw everything that was everything. to see <laughs> at St. Peter's and all kinds of other places. Yes. What was your favorite thing from the day? Oh, 
Oh my gosh, you're asking me on the spot. On my the spot, thing yep. from the whole day? Well, if it's your favorite, you should just know. I don't have, there's too much stuff. My favorite, Five Guys. <sighs> Lunch. No, it was good. We didn't go to Five Guys, but don't judge us. No, I know what it is. It was when we walked back behind, we walked, went in this little alleyway, and we walked back behind all of the buildings to Dr. Johnson's court. Mm. But it took you in a maze, and it felt like, you know, 1500s London, and you're walking through all these tight streets. You could just picture it. That was my favorite thing. It was, they weren't even big enough to be called streets. No. They're like, it was like a maze of a sidewalk between all these buildings. But it was just so tight back in there. You know, you see pictures of places and you think, oh, well, that's just like one little section or that's not how it is all over. No, like everywhere you look, London exact, is exactly how it's, <laughs> how it's portrayed how everywhere. It's supposed to be. Yes, how it's supposed to be. And it's like, it's like just sitting, eating lunch. And you look out the window, and there's St. Paul's Cathedral, and it's like you're in history. History's just all around you, and it makes you feel like you're a part of something bigger. I love that. That's why I love Europe, because it has this deep history. Yep. Uneven sidewalks. Heather only tripped like twice. It was really good. <laughs> yes. I like London a lot. St. Paul's! <laughs>